What's up good people, it's the SMT. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some stress testing and some just general use experience on the Verizon home internet, the LTE. And I wanted to give you guys a benchmark score or a benchmark uh, baseline idea of what type of speeds I get here on the connection. Uh, mind you, you know, here at my house, we run a couple of TVs. We've got tablets, iPads, phones. There's all types of stuff connected here, including security systems. So this is what I typically get when I speed test here in kind of like the middle of the day. Uh, the setup I have is actually in the lower level. So the speeds aren't the greatest, but I do like to connect it directly to my computer that I use for live streaming. So this is the speed I get from the lower level. It typically ranges between like 50 megabits and like 80 megabits because it's in the lower level, but the speeds are pretty good. 27 millisecond ping, three millisecond jitter. Like I said, I usually get about 50 down and 30 up or something like that. So you'll see the speeds are a little slower, 47 down and 19 up. But I wanted to give you guys an idea of what type of throughput I'm currently seeing as I show you the, the general use the rest of the way, you know, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna connect a few devices, a TV running 4K videos and stuff. So I want you to see where we're at and how it holds up once you start connecting many devices. All right, so we're not seeing the peak throughput I normally get. I'm not sure if that's because what else is going on that's connected in the house or if it's just, you know, management of the network there because of its uh, the time and, the, and, and, and such, you know, during the day. So 37 down, 20 up. Let's see how this holds up running two 4K videos uh, and then a YouTube live video stream. We'll watch some soccer. That's what we got here. All right, let's go ahead, Next, rest of the video. We'll see you guys on the other side. We are going to do a stress test today on the Verizon home internet. I've been running the Verizon home internet with LTE for several months, so a bit of a follow-up and a stress test. We've got a 4K movie on. You'll see the network name, We The Best, five gigahertz. All three devices are on it. So there's the iPhone 12, there's the Google Pixel 5, all on the same network, as is the 4K TV. Now we're also running 4K programming on this particular um, movie, we're, uh, that's Disney Plus, so there you go. And then down here, we've got the Liverpool game on, uh, we're streaming on YouTube TV. All right, so we got those two streams happening simultaneously. And then we got this one, let's go ahead and let's put a YouTube video to this, we'll just do a 4K video. And let me see, let's see if we can get the playback quality up as high as we can get it. And let's run them all simultaneously. So now we're at 2160 and there we go. We'll see that it is feeding there. Or one of those high definition movie documentary things. And we're running the three devices. So that's two 4K feeds. And then I think that's either 720p for the game or it's 1080p. All right, so no buffering yet. We'll see if we can get it to. So this is running at 4K. That probably needs somewhere around 25 megabits per second dedicated, at least. I know some people say you could do, you could do it like with 20 megabits or maybe 30 megabits could be what it requires. But uh, I'd say that's pretty fair expectation, 25 megabits. This connection, the YouTube TV, I don't know if it's 720p or 1080, honestly. I can't tell you guys, I'm not sure. I haven't really checked, but that probably requires, you know, four or five megabits or something like that. And then that one's a 2160 feed. So that's a 4K one as well. And they're all running, no issues. Verizon Home Internet LTE, it's holding up nice, uh, nicely. I know a lot of people will do speed tests and they'll be, you know, impressed by speed tests from their, their wire, fixed wireless connections. Yeah, I mean, the speed's important, obviously. All right, we're still running. I'm still trying to get it to buffer. It may, there we go, finally it buffered. Okay, so maybe this might be a little bit too much. Possibly, I'm not sure. It's running now. So I did get it to buffer. I've been trying to get it to buffer and it finally did. Cause I wanna see what it can handle. Now, I'm, if I run a speed test right now, and I'm gonna do that actually. So we could see what type of speeds we're getting. And let's go ahead and run that speed test. And the nice thing about YouTube TV is that'll continue to run as long as it's not buffering. That's the type of speed we're getting on the device with everything running. 
All right, is that one still going? Okay. So those are the speeds I'm getting. So I don't get the fastest speeds with Verizon on the fixed wireless. It's it's decent. You'll see the metrics there, 34 millisecond ping, four millisecond jitter, 36 down, and I'm getting like 20 on the up. That's pretty typical of what I get when I'm running all these connections at the same time. All right, so um, I don't know. That's my experience. Uh, this one's buffering now. <laughs> so I was able to get it to buffer during the speed test. There's a, a lot going on there. I don't know. So here's the thing. If you're running a couple of devices, maybe two or three connections of like high resolution playback, you might get this to happen when you run speed tests because this is pretty demanding. Plus you got the stream and then you got this stream and then you got that stream up here. All right, that one seems to be holding up nicely. So this is why I think for some people, the fixed wireless access with limitations of capacity might not work, but it's also why I think as they add spectrum and they improve the capacity, those things can be a thing of the past. All right, so um, I don't know. When I'm running like two or three connections, it's not really a problem. Like I said, I was trying to get it to buffer so I could show you guys what it takes. That's still going on up there. That's feeding. This one is feeding. So I think with the speed test running while all the connections are, you will get some buffering. Uh, so that is the Verizon Home Internet LTE does look like you can actually kind of max it out sort of and it will get buffering mind you we've got another tv we've got a macbook what do we got we got an ipad pro we got the security surveillance system running i mean we got a lot of stuff connected and it, and it does pretty good honestly you know i game a little bit i do some online gaming on fifa but uh nothing major but i wanted to share this with you guys i wanted you to see what the verizon home internet is like I'm keeping it. It's been good. Long term, it's been an answer for me. I'm also using Los Mobile, and I'll be doing a, a follow-up video on that, too, of its use. So I can kind of show you guys what I've been up to and how I've been kind of slicing my network up a little bit and just um, separating devices to kind of, you know, manage it a little bit better so that things like buffering don't happen and stuff. But it's not ideal to run two networks, but it's nice having redundancy. Some people might want to do it. But obviously... Spare me with the whole fiber is the is the best and stuff. I get it. I don't have fiber available to me. I'm trying to do with what's available to me. All right. And I know a lot of people out there are, are thinking the same thing. I'm going to be trying Starlink. I'm going to be trying a whole bunch of different things. Again, at the same time, when I got the Verizon, I also tried the T-Mobile Home Internet and it wasn't very good for me. So I ended up returning that. They were just giving me credits and stuff. Um, it wasn't good. So I couldn't use it. But Verizon seems to be doing a nice job of routing traffic. It performs better, even though it's like half the speed, right? I used to get like 150 to 180 megabits per second on T-Mobile Home Internet, and I would get buffering video on one connection. So even with half or less of the speed, the Verizon has been holding up nicely. So if it becomes available to you and you're looking for an option, it's been good to me. Just my thoughts and my experiences I wanted to share with you guys. Give this video a like and a share. Uh, if you enjoyed it and then go ahead and comment down below if you've been using the service or if you have any questions, things that you want to know, let me know. Um, we can answer those things for you. And, um, that's it. I'll probably do another long-term review so far. So good. We're at six plus months and it's been awesome. Very good for me. And I'll probably do a follow-up on most mobile too. So that's coming. Uh, let me know if you're excited about that comment down below. And of course, subscribe for more content from the SMT and turn on the bell notifications so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good rest of the day, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.